Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So, I have shown you previously how we can go ahead and use the Java appline method and the PDF file Trojan horses. But in this tutorial, I will be teaching you something different that is man in the middle attack or it's also called as monkey in the middle attack so what you in, uh, to be more precise in short what you're doing is that there are two computers and you are sitting in between their connection and whatever passes in between them you are sniffing modifying changing or poisoning all of these cache memories or not only cache memories also the active bits that are being transferred so uh, that's how it works but there are different ways as to how we can go ahead and do that and uh, I'll, this is a simple way as to how we can go to do that this is the server this is the client the client tries to access the server but you are sitting in between and most of the time this happens in public wi-fi hotspot so let's say for example this is a mcdonald and this is your you are trying to use the open server of mcdonald that is the wi-fi hotspot that they have which is uh, most of the time open and this is the attacker that is me sitting over here so when you try to go ahead and log in on uh, the mcdonald's wi-fi hotspot uh, you are sending the information but the information is not directly going over there it's being transmitted to me and then uh, i can go ahead and redirect it with where i want or i can go ahead and poison it and send something else to the server and then this, if the server sends something i can go ahead and modify that again and send it back to you so I'm just uh, sitting in between and I am going ahead and doing all the changes that I need. But there are different ways of attacks and there are multiple types of attacks which we can do because when you go and try to connect to your client there are multiple things happening in the background like gain, uh, gathering DNS information or the ARPs and multiple other things. So these are the different types of attacks that are there in um, man in the middle attack uh, that is the local area network that means uh, it's just on uh, it's not on the internet it's just between uh, inside the company uh, it can be like you can say as uh, the intranet for example. So these are different types of attack that is ARP poisoning, DNS spoofing, STP mangling and port stealing. And then we have through a gateway from local machine to a remote machine. They're doing the same thing again, ARP poisoning, DNS spoofing, DHCP spoofing, ICMP redirection, IRDP spoofing and route mangling. And finally once we have the remote access we can again go and do DNS poisoning, traffic tunneling and route mangling finally. So I would be teaching you some of these stuffs today and I'll let you know how exactly these works. So we will start today with ARP poisoning and I'll tell you how this works exactly. This is how an ARP poisoning works. The user is connected to the client and you are in between um, so you know what's happening exactly between the user and the server and the actual data that you pass it never uh, reaches the server it goes through you and then it reaches the server and whatever server reply and you know what exactly is happening so whatever you are trying to send uh, the attacker can go and modify and send something else and send something else back to you so for example if you go and try to access youtube.com uh, the attacker will go ahead and redirect that traffic to let's say for example any random website let's say wonderhowto.com or google.com for example so it doesn't matter how much time you go and try to visit google it will still redirect you to google.com because it is the attacker what is happening or if you like it's trying to access facebook.com it doesn't matter even if it's through https website the person can still go ahead and gain access through that by going ahead and stripping off the SSL from your that is the security from your 128 bit encrypt. So that's how it works. So let's start with how what ARP poisoning is and ARP spoofing is exactly. So you may not be knowing what ARP spoofing is exactly. So I'll just go ahead and define that for you in simple terms. The full form of ARP is address resolution protocol and ARP protocol is uh, something different and uh, let me tell you that there are two different things uh, if you go and search on web that is ARP poisoning and ARP spoofing they're almost the same or I can say that not exactly the same but uh, one is a part of the other that means ARP spoofing is a part of ARP poisoning so that means if you are poisoning the ARP then spoofing is automatically happening in the background so as you can see we have two computers one is the, the original computer this is the server through which it goes and uh, I am the attacker over here and this is the HP laser printer chat and this as the IP address so ARP is a protocol for mapping an internet protocol address that's IP address to a physical machine so it uh, goes ahead and gives a specific IP address to a physical machine 
and it is recognized in only the local area network. For example, in uh, IPv4 version, the most common level of IP in use today an address is 32 bits long and in Ethernet or local area network, the address however for attached devices are 48 bits long and the physical machine is also known as the media access control or the MAC address and a table uh, which is usually called as the ARP cache memory is used to maintain a correlation between each MAC addresses and the corresponding IP addresses. ARP provides the protocol rules for making this correlation and providing addresses conversion in both directions. So when an incoming packet uh, destined for uh, let's say a host machine on a particular local area network arrives at a gateway, the gateway asks the program to find a physical host or MAC address that matches the IP address. So as you can see in the diagram over here, it's asking that who has the uh, IP address of 192.168.0.45. It's asking either of uh, these three computers because these three are the LAN connection right now. So and the ARP program looks in the ARP cache memory then and if it finds the address uh, it provides it so that the packet can be converted to the right packet length that is 32 bit or 48 bit whichever it is and format it and send it back to the machine. If no entry is found for the IP address ARP broadcast request packet in a special format to all the machines on the LAN to see if one machine knows that it has that IP address associated with it and the machine will then automatically go and contact back to the originating machine and the machine that recognizes the IP address as its own returns a reply uh, so indicating the same and ARP updates the ARP cache for future reference first and then sends the packet to the MAC address that reply. So you might be wondering what is ARP poisoning exactly. So it is that uh, to be in simple terms, uh, normal hackers lie and skillful hackers lie very well. And hackers that are well rounded, they can lie both to machines as well as people. Lying to people is known as social engineering and it involves tactics which was detailed at length by convicted hacker Kevin Mitnick such as posing as a company's employee so that the company's real employees will blab all their secrets freely. And, but lying to machine involves lots of different techniques and um, one of the most commonly used one is ARP cache poisoning and that is the focus of this tutorial. ARP poisoning enables local hackers to cause general networking mayhem because it's mostly incurable and every administrator should be aware of how this works. ERP is basically a form of networking roll call. It is a very simple protocol which consists of merely four basic messages. Uh, the first is that at the ARP request, computer A asks uh, the network who has this IP address and ARP reply as you can see on the diagram over here that this is my Mac IP address. And then a reverse request by ARP uh, that is uh, RARP that is called as uh, and it is the same concept as the ARP request but over here the computer A that is the Jessica's computer over here it replies who has this MAC address after the after they have the IP address and then the computer uh, HP laser jet printer replies that it, it is the, it has the MAC IP MAC address so first it checks the IP address then it checks the MAC address so all network devices have an ARP table a short term memory of all the IP addresses and MAC addresses and the device has already uh, ma uh, matched together. The ARP table ensures that the device doesn't have to repeat the ARP request for the devices it has already communicated with. So here's an example I'll uh, go ahead and teach you of a normal ARP communication about uh, uh, the Jessica and the HP LaserJet printer which I will be teaching you today. So, but uh, that is it for this tutorial guys, uh, I was the, which I was about to tell you as to how ARP works. In the next tutorial, I will be teaching you in detail as to how this works exactly along with an example. And later on, we would be trying that and after that, we will go ahead and inject our main viruses inside our software payload. For which you would obviously be needing the iter cap, which is again takes back to the MITM that is man in the middle attack. So, that is it for this tutorial.